and I'm going to turn it over to now to Stacy, uh, who is going to talk to us about partnerships and how partnerships help us diversify our outlook and um, increase uh, our connections with the community, broaden our impact. So Stacy, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to you. Thank you, Donna. Welcome everyone. I wasn't able to participate in your breakout rooms, but it's nice to see so many familiar faces. Let's get this going. What are you seeing? Not your whole, not your, uh, we're seeing your slides, okay. but not the screen, not the uh, presentation. A little bit of a delay and now? No. We're still not seeing your presentation. We're seeing your notes. <laughs> Interesting. How's this? Yes, yeah. that's presenter view. There Perfect. you go. Perfect. Thanks for your patience, everyone. All of these meeting settings, we're all getting used to using Zoom. <laughs> so in Rotary, we are all proud, proud members and get a sense of belonging, learning opportunities like this evening, so much personal and professional growth in Rotary. And these are just a few of the gifts that we give and receive as members of this worldwide movement. Uh, friends, fellow Rotarians, I don't know if there's any Rotaractors on the call, but if there are, welcome. We are all equal members, the movers, if you will, in this movement, as um, describes us uh, Rotary International President-elect Shaker. Um, back in February, he announced the theme for 2122, Serve to Change Lives. And along with that came a guiding mantra to do more and grow more. Do more as in bigger and having more impactful service projects and grow more as in nurturing the relationships that we have already by engaging and empowering our people, the members and partners. And in doing so, we can expand our reach as a global movement. But we might be all wondering, how do we do that? It takes time, talent, treasure, and ties, our connections. And the sum of these T's is true relationships that are built on a foundation of trust, as was the wish of our founder, Paul Harris. This African proverb um, will guide the how as well. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So let's go there and grow together, respecting the unique assets and talents that all of our members and partners bring to Rotary. In Rotary, there really are no strangers, only the friends that we haven't met yet. And as my favorite poet, Maya Angelou says, in diversity, there's beauty and there is strength. So as neighbors, friends, leaders in Rotary and problem solvers that we all are, we can take our core values in Rotary, which are diversity, fellowship, integrity, leadership and service, and use those to um, meet what our current president, President Knack says, is diversity is not a wish list for our Rotary Club. This is our core value. So with those assets and talents in mind, and these wise words of those that came before us, let's explore how we can strengthen relationships and build great partnerships. As Rotarians, we're all familiar with the soon to be seven areas of focus. So I'm not going to name them all, but you know where to find them. We're adding the environment, which we hope will allow us to do more and grow more uh, with that being a focus of a lot of the millennial and young leader generations. And moving forward, as of July 1st, all of our projects will align with these seven areas of focus and or one or more of the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. So in clubs of all shapes and sizes, each with their distinct culture that Tyla talked about, we are serving hand in hand with our members and partners, current partners and prospective partners. We truly are better together as equal partners to promote integrity and advance world understanding, goodwill and positive peace. 
So uh, the Rotary International and the United Nations are two global brands with a shared vision for peace. Shared vision is such an important, essential element to building a great partnership. And just a few days ago, those two organizations celebrated 75 years of action in partnership. Together with Rotary International's foundation, which has the distinct recognition of being a four-star rated charity and other philanthropic partners, such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and so many others, we build relationships and raise funds that we can turn into district and global grant opportunities. So any new relationships that we're able to attract to the Rotary Movement, um, strengthening our member relations, retaining those members that we have, and building great partnerships combined are really a true recipe for success stories that we can then share and raise Rotary's public image and share the positive impact that we're having through partnering, even if it's remotely like we're doing tonight. So around the world, Rotarians and Rotor actors are committed to service above self in innovative clubs, local communities across districts and zones. As clubs, you partner already with local businesses, with nonprofits, provincial, municipal, and federal governments. Internationally, through Rotary International support, we can access global leaders and partner organizations like the United Nations, World Health Organization, and um, others like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that supports the End Polio Now and new vaccination programs. NGO partners like UNICEF, Habitat for Humanity, and Shelterbox help us provide housing and wash projects. While Stop Hunger Now, that we had in Alberta a few years back, brings us together to alleviate food insecurity. As well, Rotary International has a new strengthened partnership with Toastmasters, which helps us build public speaking skills that we need to celebrate and share our message more wildly. So now we're going to watch a short video that you may have seen. It's called Rotary Membership Any Town. While doing so, let's think about how Rotary, our own Rotary experiences have served us to change and grow as leaders. And who might those people of action be in our community, those strangers that we just haven't met yet? So fingers crossed that this works. And if you're having bandwidth issues, I would ask you to turn off your, um, your videos, which might help. And if anyone has issues, please raise the hand so we can uh, look at getting that into the chat for you. So here goes. As Rotary, we often ask ourselves, how do we grow personally, professionally, and organizationally? Do we have sound? Yes. Yes. yes, you're good. Okay. Whoops. As Rotary, we often ask ourselves, how do we grow personally, professionally, and organizationally? The answer is simple. To grow Rotary, we need more Rotary clubs. Let's use Anytown as an example. Anytown is a city of 100,000 people and home to one proud Rotary Club. But there are hundreds of other people of action, just like us, who are uniquely qualified to become Rotary members. They share the same drive and represent the values and fundamentals of a Rotary member. So why aren't they members? Well, the current club meets on Monday. There are leaders in any town who can't meet on a Monday. By excluding this segment, the potential members in any town has shrunk. Now consider, what if the meeting is at noon on Monday? There are people who can meet on Monday, but can't meet at noon. So now we have a smaller audience for Rotary in any town. Of the remaining group, some aren't interested in a club with a sit-down lunch and speakers. They are passionate about service, but aren't interested in a traditional club experience. And that is okay. The Rotary Club of Anytown isn't doing anything wrong. It just doesn't appeal to particular segments of the community. And if we're going to thrive for years to come, we must adapt and embrace change. In Anytown, we have an opportunity to expand, 
because potential members are everywhere. More than half of the eligible people are prospective Rotary members, waiting to make a bigger impact in their community. But what Rotary Club exists for them? If any town creates new clubs at new times and new places, the hidden potential for Rotary will be revealed. As people of action, we must broaden our reach and provide opportunities to all leaders in the community. Together, all of us can grow Rotary. We're so lucky to have fellow Rotarians that share these uh, productions with us. And I would invite you all to go to the Rotary International Vimeo page to see literally thousands of short videos that you can use to engage and get start conversations in your clubs. So I'd like you to say in the chat, what's one organization that your club partners with already? It might be helpful to share in this group who you're partnering with already. So if I could get people to work in the chat and we'll have a little bit of a conversation about this. It's so encouraging to invite people, um, whether it's your guest speakers or organizations you're partnering with to experience the magic of Rotary. And based on those shared interests in maybe one of those SDGs or one area of focus, you can develop and create new partnerships that would strengthen your club. So we're getting Imagination Library, Nordic Ski Clubs, Schools, Days for Girls, Food Banks, Inclusion Alberta and Lloydminster, Habitat for Humanity, Multicultural Associations. Keep those coming. Oh, Orange Shirt Day. That's a new one I haven't seen. Excellent. So by sharing with your uh, fellow president elects and, um, you know, this hopefully will just get the conversation started so you could take note of who that person is, what that club is, and in your future meetings, share where you might be able to come together as clubs and um, work on a new partnership or enhancing a partnership that you have already. Thank you for participating. So when I reflect on my experiences as a not-for-profit leader and fundraiser, we built relationships between individual donors and the causes that we cared about, but we also created partnerships between corporate and non-corporate entities. And when I took a partnership brokerage training program last fall, it really reinforced the importance of all of these steps in the partnering cycle. Those four phases are... Number one, scoping and building out the partnership. And this happens even before we agree to partner and put pen to paper on developing a memorandum of understanding or maybe some guidelines or a matrix around the partnership. Phase two is managing and maintaining the partnership. So these ideas of inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility, and sustainability would all be excellent things to work on in your governance structures and just to deepen the engagement. Phase three is reviewing and revising on a regular basis. And this can be guided by Rotary's four-way test. And phase number four is sustaining those outcomes. So when you set out a big part of accessing global and district grants is having measures in place so that you can um, prove that the, the change that you're trying to bring in that community can be sustained over time and that there's partners there on the ground to keep it going. So again, in the chat, think about an existing or maybe a potential partnership that you're involved in as a leader in your business or in your community other than Rotary or maybe in your Rotary Club. Which phase in this partnership cycle do you think can be enhanced? So again, those four phases are scoping, managing and maintaining, reviewing and revising, and sustaining outcomes. And if you'd like to share your thoughts with the group, just raise your hand and we'll get un unmute yourself. So when we think about those existing or potential partnerships that you're involved in as a club, which phase in this partnership cycle do you think could be enhanced? 
Lou, would you mind speaking up about why you believe the scoping and building is so important? Um, sure. So um, often in our club, we, we struggle to find um, how to properly reach out to the people in our communities that, uh, that really need our help. And so the more organizations and the more other partnerships you have that can help you figure out the scope of some of, of the programs that you could have to have the most impact in your community is important. Absolutely. And um, some of the resources that Tyla shared are equally uh, valuable for looking those things up. So my, the blog at rotary.org is a great place to do some keyword searches and partner partnership. Uh, MyRotary.org in the course catalog, you'll find diversity, equity and inclusion courses. And the favorite tool at this point that I'd like you to take away a note of and will absolutely include in the resources is the community assessment tool. So it's a 24 page PDF that will walk you through and your club leadership through how you might identify and assess uh, potential partners and how you could um, kind of draw out all of those community assets. And then this Partnership Brokers Association, we're so lucky here in Canada and in Alberta specifically to have one of my peers, Jocelyn Daw, based in Calgary. So if you go to jsdaw.com forward slash ideas, she, her entire blog and communities of practice, a free community of practice is around partnering with purpose. So we'll include that in the resources for you to check out as well. I see that Marilyn is suggesting reviewing and revising is the most important part of the scope. Would you mind unmuting yourself, Marilyn, for explaining a little bit more? Sure. Thanks, Stacey. Um, what we've learned is, especially when we're talking about member engagement and new members in particular and younger professionals, they want to know the impact that they're making with service projects. And they also need to define how much time um, you know, is required of them so that they can fit it into their busy schedule. So uh, what I'm hearing from some clubs is that they've had these long-standing partnerships with organizations, but they've never really revisited to see what is the impact that they're making in their community to quantify it? You know, should they be continuing with that same organization or they, do they need to revisit it or, or just perhaps get better definition of what the end result is to know whether they should be continuing with that partnership? Yeah, excellent point. And if and when you do get into those uh, questioning situations, I always rely on the four-way test to guide you through what maybe needs to be part of that conversation. That's excellent. So we did share these um, 10 pieces of the partnering cycle in with the agenda a few weeks ago, and we'll repeat that in the resources so they have this chart on hand. So when I reflect on my top 10 Rotary moments so far, I realized that they all involved a partnership. They all contributed to a greater sense of belonging. There was experiential learning involved, um, personal and professional growth, specifically around partnering with Indigenous communities. So I'm so grateful that Rotary introduced me to that. And it's been a 10 year journey and a, a work in progress, as they say. But as well, all of these partnerships shared five core principles for impactful partnering that you should see on the screen. Embracing diversity leads to creating new value. Ensuring equity among partners leads to respect. Building openness leads to trust. And committing to the mutual benefit for the community leads to commitment. And we all need to be leaders that have the courage to break, to create these breakthrough results. So in the chat, on a scale of one to 10, with one being, there's lots of room for improvement, and number 10 being, oh, wow, we excel at this. Which of, how well is your club embracing diversity? So on a scale of one to 10, how well is your club currently embracing diversity? We're getting some fours, C's. Excellent. 
Yeah, really across the scale. And as long as we know where we are, where we're starting, and we have a desire to improve our clubs and be open to what our members are telling us, we can practice all of these five principles in our clubs. So I'm being told that we've got someone with their hand up. I cannot see that, but feel free if you've got your hand raised to take yourself off of mute and ask your question or contribute your comments. It was uh, Dennis and thank you for Catherine for marking that. Uh, no, I was just kind of going back with the other, uh, the previous slide is that uh, um, don't be afraid to look in the community and find those that are have successful and partner with them to build those relationships and partnering and uh and then with regards to the core principles um we've talked about it before uh to to get other members uh don't get into the thing of saying we want to do a, a, a embrace diversity and then uh wind up saying okay well we need somebody of this and somebody of that you still have to vet your members to make sure there will be a good fit of course and i'm sure every club has that's kind of part of the culture too how you're attracting new members how you're maintaining new members and and the process that you go through for onboarding and exiting sometimes uh, those people partners and members alike thank you could for I those just contributions stacy could i just read and I think also it's it's when you're vetting your members, it's also vetting your club and looking at is your club a good match uh, for this particular member too? Because we have, you know, in some communities, we only have one rotary club. Now we might be able to look at something different, but we also have e-clubs and those kinds of things. So the it's it's really finding the right match for both the individual and for your club and thinking about that in the process excellent now i see in the chat that some of you responded uh eight which is pretty high on that scale would uh, aaron or terry like to speak up about how you are practicing diversity so well sorry um i just had to get myself off mute um well, our ages range from mid thirties to, I think one of our members just celebrated his 72nd birthday, 71st, 72nd, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and basically what, what we all recognize is that we all want to be part of the community. Um, and, I, and I do remember at one point, we noticed that we were so heavy with female, um, female members that we recognized, okay, it's time to start introducing some male members in just to try and uh, balance we also recognized at one point that we had more lawyers than anything else. And so we tried to minimize the number of lawyers that we would bring in. We've since balanced out and we feel relatively um, equal. Uh, we do recognize that, we miss, that, that we're missing out on um, people who have just come from university, who have just grad graduated from university. Um, but I think that's, we had partnered previously with um, a Rotaract club. Mm. And I think, um, and, and we're still trying to keep that partnership going. We know that this Rotaract club is having some issues. And so we're just checking to see what's going on there. Um, and so we, we do recognize that we have some gaps that we're trying to fill. That's why we're not higher. Yeah. But well, that's I, great. I do know that we have a wide variety of different professionals. We worked at trying to have a different, like a balanced uh, demographic of male, female, zers. Um, 
And I think it's just the enthusiasm that we have that brings that diversity. Yeah. And um, Marilyn's bringing up a good point too. We really have to look at all of those elements in the charter, you know, as someone that speaks a couple of languages um, and um, has been, you know, worked in environments where accessibility is important, not just mobility, but closed captioning or, um, using the uh, notes and tools in these online tools that we have to use to meet now uh, can also open up uh, diversity, cultural diversity, um, uh, gender identification, all of these things um, are uh, well and high in our list of priorities to learn, gain understanding and just be open to uh, improving our diversity. So here in District 5370, we have been partnering with Purpose for years and have some very um, active members representing us as innovative club advocates. Um, we have, you know, Tyla was sharing that they even partner with an early act club, which is at the elementary school level. We've got our community-based interact clubs, our newest one here in St. Albert and uh, community and uh, post-secondary institution-based Rotaract clubs that are now on equal footing considered Rotarians. And so I encourage you all to not only make a seat at the table, but work on the cultures to create that diversity. Personally, as a member of a vocational services committee and at um, the inaugural community services committee that the districts just created this year, I had the opportunity to uh, come to know the longstanding partnership that 5360 shares with uh, Inclusion Alberta. And in February of this year, we just celebrated 20 years of partnership with the Rotary Employ Employment Partnership at Inclusion Alberta. And uh, it's something, you know, the purpose of that partnership is to pr promote inclusion of individuals with developmental disabilities by supporting employment. And it's a great way to, uh, just reach out and have conversations and not only with the employers of your club members but businesses uh, if you're in uh, if you're not in a major center I can see that as a great way to open up and share what Rotary is doing. We also have in District 5370 uh, the Rotary Indigenous Committee that is collaborating with a new cross Canada partnership called Honoring Indigenous Peoples. And this originated in Ontario and proposes a shared leadership model of 50% Rotarians and 50% non Rotarians. So I think those are great partnerships um, that you can explore. And if we think about um, the trust and inclusive um, approach that it takes to make all of our beloved youth services and youth exchange programs run smoothly, it truly takes a village to create great partnerships. And so we'll share some of these resources with you, but we'd love to create an opportunity for you to go into breakout rooms if we still have time. Um, and I would invite you, we're going to randomly send you into breakout rooms, but as leaders in rotaries at work, in the community, at your clubs, you're all partnership brokers. And partnership brokers possess the essential leadership skills that it takes, like empathy and courage to have these conversations and invite people into partnership. So I, when you go into breakout rooms, you're gonna be um, assigned randomly, choose a scribe, and that same person will invite a few to report back when you come back to the main room. And you can discuss one or all of these questions as time permits, we're gonna give you 10 minutes. What makes a great partnership? Why are partnerships important? And what partnerships does your club have or opportunities do you have? So we'll invite you to take 10 minutes and we'll pop those questions in the chat as well. Enjoy the group discussion and know that at the end, later this evening, you'll have a chance for fellowship with your AGs. And so you, um, you can continue those conversations later this evening. Folks that are coming back to the main room, how was that? I know these breakout room opportunities go by so quickly 
And we hope that these guiding questions really just gave you something to spark a discussion. And uh, later this evening, when we send you into fellowship with your AGs, um, perhaps you'll continue those discussions. I'd like to invite uh, breakout room number two to uh, share what was discussed in your room real quick. Which question did you answer? What, or what insights did you have? What makes a great partnership? Why are partnerships important? And what partnerships does your club have? Can I get a volunteer? Or voluntold? <laughs> I'll volunteer, Stacey. Well, thank you, Marilyn. We had a great discussion in our group and it's centered really what, what makes a, a partnership great is that it expands the network, um, expands friendships and fellowships. That's a key was about what makes a partnership great is that the members have to believe in that organization and cause and the connection is the core values. So is it whatever that club is all about that it connects to the values of that organization. And the other key is to have a champion in the club that will be tied to that partnership and likewise with the partner organization to have a champion that connects with the Rotary Club. They also mentioned that many memberships arose because of that partnership. True, and it sometimes takes time, but that, sh that, that shared values piece is so, so important in the scoping, um, taking the time to validate that you're on the same page and that, um, yeah, that you kind of have almost like at work, that team charter about how you're going to work with each other and how you're going to govern the project. Excellent. How about group number four? I think that was our group. Um, just give me one sec here. So we said that for what makes for a good partnership, um, definitely that it's, if it's uh, mutually beneficial for all parties that are involved, um, having good participation from all members and uh, both organizations, uh, making sure that your goals are common and aligned, and then um, making sure that it's a, a valuable partnership or it's perceived as valuable to your membership. So that's um, what makes for a good partnership. And then are we answering all the questions or just the one for now? Oh, if you had an insight on the other one, that would be great to share. Please feel free. Sure. Um, so then we also said for why are partnerships important? Um, it creates a lot of efficiency and you can have a larger impact on, on your goal. Um, it's an opportunity to contribute to the community and it gives members purpose and a positive experience. Mm. And that's what we're all striving to, right? Yeah. Doing, uh, doing what we're best at, contributing what we want to contribute as members and uh, learning and growing at the same time. That makes for a positive experience all around. Thank you for sharing that. And how about group six? Let's hear from your group. I can speak for group six. And um, one of the things like, a lot of the, the conversations that we've already heard were the same types of things that we spoke about, but we had a couple of real gem ideas as well. Um, one of the things, uh, one of the clubs started a uh, service club group and basically they went into their community and looked at um, what other service clubs organizations there are and, and uh, approached all of them like the Lions Club, Kingsmen, etc. cetera, and um, got an opportunity to um, just set a meeting occasionally so that they could actually work together to build a shared calendar and then of course have make a bigger impact together and really start to use the resources in their community a little bit more uh, effectively and efficiently. So I mm. thought that was a, um, a really clever idea that, uh, um, <clears throat> that we could certainly approach in our own club. And uh, let's see here. Um, I think, uh, I guess that's the main stuff and shared values of course, um, even they, even when there were some communities that had more than one club in a town, um, they said they could work together or even across their region. And sometimes there'd be some friendly rivalry. Um, but the main thing is that people don't also don't always understand that there are a number of different clubs. They 
will recognize the rotary banner and may not necessarily understand that there are different clubs. So um, just keeping that focus on the rotary banner side and, and the values of rotary that seem to be mm-hmm. important. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, how many times in a in a community, even in a large center, I used to live in Montreal, where when you're in this space of partnerships, you can have five events to choose from on the same night. And if there was just some air traffic control about uh, between service organizations or large organizations, it would make us all more efficient uh, in delivering our projects, and especially when it's event based. Great contributions. Well, I just want to thank you all for your participation and all that you do in Rotary to open opportunities and serve to change lives. And I wish you all the best in embracing this mantra of do more and grow more by creating and holding space for systems change through partnership. Have a great presidential year and a great rest of the evening. We'll turn it back to Donna.